I also was taking a risk because I wasn't sure what would happen if the people at school, especially my students, or even worse, their parents, found out about it. But I didn't really care about these risks. I couldn't afford to. It was a journey I felt compelled to take, the road less closed, and this was my first step. As I stood there on stage, the Wailing Diva song played on. I knew I had to start taking something off, but I didn't really know how to do it. Like most people, I'd never given much thought to taking off my clothes. It was just something I did. I had an audience, but now I had an audience that was expecting me to do it. And it wasn't like there was a training course or apprenticeship program for aspiring strippers. So first I lifted up my t-shirt, gripping it from the bottom and pulling it inside out over my head. I'd later find out this was a girly way of taking off a shirt, <laughs> but that was all I knew at the time. And then I'm still so conscious about taking off my shirt in public now because of that. But anyway, once my chest was bare, I sucked in my stomach and felt my nipples harden in the cold air. Next, I took off my jean shorts, first playing with the front snap, then slowly lowering the zipper and letting the denim drop. I wasn't wearing any underwear because no self-respecting summer camp boy slut wears drawers. Then I stepped out of the shorts one leg at a time. I was now entirely naked except for my sneakers and two white tube socks on my feet. My grandmother had given me these socks for Christmas a few months before, and I really liked them because they had dark gray patches at the, toe, at the toe and the heel. The next thing I had to worry about was my dick. It wasn't hard, it was even a little shrunken from the cold. I started tugging on it nervously. I didn't know what to do. When I jerked off at home, I usually was lying down, watching a porn tape, or flipping through a magazine, not standing upright in, a room, in front of a room full of strangers. You know, kind of like this. Um, I probably shouldn't have been thinking, I probably should have been thinking about something to turn me on, but my mind wasn't really working that way. I wasn't having actual thoughts. It was all a nervous rush. I kept yanking on my dick. Hours, years, a full millennium seemed to pass. I took some more until I finally got into a respectable hang. Once again, I thought, fuck it, and headed out into the audience, walking down from the stage, carefully taking one step at a time. I stood in front of the rows of seats and instantly felt safer. It was dark here, away from the spotlight of the stage. My heart rate slowed. There was no one in the first two rows, which had, se which had several broken seats covered with duct tape. So I walked over to an older guy in the third row. He smiled as I stood in front of him and lifted my left leg, propping it up on one of his armrests. He placed a folded dollar bill into my sock and put one hand firmly behind my balls, using the other hand to grab my dick. I got... Why is that funny? <laughs> I got rock hard as he moved his hand back and forth. Uh, I couldn't explain why. It wasn't like he was hot or anything, and I could even make out a bit of old guy smell beneath the general folly's funk. But here I was, as hard as I'd ever been. It wasn't so much what the guy was doing to me as the fact that after thinking about it for such a long time, I was actually doing this. I stayed with him for about a minute. In my mind, I imagined a parking meter. I was wondering how much time he should get for a buck. My set lasted only 10 minutes and there were about six other customers I had to get to. I slowly pulled away from him, leaned over and whispered, thank you. No, he responded, thank you. I smiled and moved to my next customer, another older white dude who asked, what are you? as he grabbed my package. Excuse me? What are you? What nationality? Um, American, the last time I checked my passport. I mean, what's your ethnic background? You look Hispanic or Filipino or something. See, at the clubs, most of the dancers were white, with the occasional black, Latino, or I don't know, looking guy like me thrown in. <laughs> it made for some interesting conversations as customers tried to figure out if who I was matched with who they wanted me to be. I'm black, I said. Really? You don't look it. I shrugged my shoulders. Is one of your parents white? He asked. Nope. Oh, well, you have an interesting look. Thanks, I said, adding on mine, I guess. I left this guy and moved to the next customer who sat in the back row. He was an Asian guy in his 20s. I positioned myself in front of him. My dick stood at full mass. That looks dangerous, he said, as he put some bills in my sock and started stroking me. What is it, about 10 inches? I don't know, I said. I don't think so. I've never measured it. I really hadn't. and still haven't. <laughs> Somebody asked that once. Um, his head lowered and his eyes fixed on my dick like it was some kind of target. Then he pulled on it with all his might, like he was in a yanking contest at a county fair. Whoa, man, slow down, I said, geez. I put my hand over his and moved it slowly back and forth, like this, I said. He looked up sheepishly and gave me another tip. 
With my time almost over, I made my way to the last guy in the back row, who was by far the weirdest. He was short and fat, with pale, pasty skin, and a few shellacked wisps of hair plastered to his nearly bald scalp. When I stood in front of him, he tipped me, and then he reached for my dick with his thumb and forefinger, like he was examining something in a laboratory, as if saying, a human male penis, interesting. Notice its firmness and baby texture. His clinical maneuver, his clinical manner, made my, clock, it made my cock instantly deflate. You can tell a lot about how a guy masturbates by the way he touches you, said Casey, one of the other two dancers I was working with, after I finished my set. We were sitting in the dressing room, which was also a functioning room closet, waiting for the finale where we all danced together. I used the time to debrief. Some of them were just plain weird, though, I said. And then this one guy pulled it so hard, it was like he wanted to take it home as a souvenir. My dick felt like one of those metal handles that people hold on to while riding the subway. <laughs> Casey laughed and told me to buy a tube of elbow grease, a creamy oil-based lubricant from the front counter. It helps cut down on the wear and tear, he explained, <laughs> rubbing lotion over his arms, which had tattoos curling down them like colorful snakes. We waited in the dressing room while the other dancer went through his set. Then we went back to the theater for the 10-minute finale. I don't remember any of the other songs that played while I was dancing, but the last song of the finale was Madonna's Where's the Party. As I walked through the audience again, butt naked, hands on my dick, Madonna thumping on my ear, where's the party, I want to free my soul, where's the party, I want to lose control, I felt that I'd made a transformation, as surely as Superman slipping out of a phone booth or Wonder Woman doing a sunburst spin. I was bare ass in a room of paying strangers, a stripper. After years of wondering what it would be like, I had done it. Faced a fear, defied expectation, embraced a taboo self. It was only the beginning. Thank you.